Good times up, it's me, BJ Double T, here at Existing with some more Tavern Talk as we dive in to being me as your lovely bartender slash tavern keeper slash whatever you may have for the night. But yeah, I'm back with some more of Act 3, The Twilight Flood, Chapter 15, Riptide, 19th of the Astral Moon. Without further ado, let's dive in. Ah, yes, the rooster. We'll see how many nights I can go through today. Ooh. The fall of Oh, Inigo. It's been a hot minute since I've met you. Now, what voice did I give you, Inigo? Sup, my fellow Enigma? Sup. I don't find you that difficult to comprehend. That's what they all think. How's it going? Hopping? Running? Bad? Moderately? Good? We'll say moderately. I'm in the middle. Why? My tavern and I are doing well, but we were hit by a tsunami yesterday. I'm glad I can provide comfort to everyone in these trying times, but I also wish that they were less turbulent. Boo. Spoken like a true politician. Commit to one extreme. I'm committing to honesty. <laughs> yeah, right. Good one. But a tsunami, huh? So that's what that was. Cool. Sucks that I was busy playing a round of Magic the Scathering. Uh, made me miss the whole thing. I would have loved to surf those waves. I'm sure you would have had a grand old time. Maybe next flood. You think I should uh, start the next one on purpose? No. Aw, come on. This place has made you lame. I'd like my timer to keep standing and the people around it as well. Like I said, lame. You had anything interesting to say? Um, I have an interesting question. Shoot. Have you seen Millie anywhere? She's gone missing. Oh, that pocket-sized detective sure did. Several times even. Were any of them recently? Would say so. I think the last time was... Uh, two days ago. I was chilling by in the swamp. I had just tested out that witch spa's good old boy boy recommended. Met some lost travelers on the way back. I was giving them the conversation of their lives. <laughs> well, that cat really interrupted my business pitch. Made them run off without a single handshake, little snitch. But what were you selling? Air growth cocktails. Inspired by your little things. You drink them, your hair grows. Fast? Ah, uh, well, fast, smash, pass. It'll go eventually. You just gotta have some patience. I see. So, Melly at the Moon Swamp, where exactly did you see her? On the way to the Moon Pools, duh. Where the paths diverge. And nature tries to lead you astray from its shimmering reflections in the water. Isn't that near one of the Twilight Chasm portals? Oh yeah, that means she's got a she got a fresh opportunity to go surfing. Good for her. What a positive outlook on things. I always get to have one of those. After all. All that matters in life is fun, right? I don't know about that. Life is full of many beautiful and important things. Not all of them are fun. Oh, they should be. At least for me. I don't care what you're up to. Speaking of fun, I've been wondering, do you think I should explore the Twilight Chasm? Do you want to? Ish. Sounds exciting, especially since I've never been there before. They say it's just like Avalon, but reversed, with a different color scheme and all that. Do you enjoy Avalon? Sometimes. I haven't been home in ages, let me tell you. As soon as those portals opened up, I was out of there. 
Running from pesky consequences. You got it. Been wondering what a nightmare version of Gaia looks like. That's what they call it, right? I made this. Is it right game-wise or right where you are? Is it nighttime? What's happening? Avalon's the dream. The Twilight Chasm's the nightmare. Guys, like, so, like walking, aching up. <laughs> Probably doesn't look too different from the Sealy Court. Am I right? Couldn't tell you. So you claim, but I knew a fellow scam artist when I see one. The mirror. Oh. You think you're funny, don't you? Well, you're hilarious. Actually, I made this. It's... It, it, I think it is from the same ca creators of co as Coffee Talk. But this is Tavern Talk, so more D&D based. It's only so bright because it's daytime. Like, it's, it's morning. It'll get less bright later on. High five, bud. No. Bummer. Anyway, with your obviously non-existent but only hypothetical plane traveling experience, do you think I should take a trip down to the horrors of memory and melancholia? I don't think you should. I think you should. I think you should. It sounds so very exciting. Who knows what you'll find? Maybe the answers you seek. Also, Emmett, I made this. If you if you want to grab a drink, you can. We have commands for, I think, exclamation mark tavern, if you type that in chat, or exclamation mark drink. And there are, like, responses that happen when you type those up. The commands. I'm not seeking answers. I already know what I want. But maybe you'll find the right questions. You're so weird. You know that, right? That makes the two of us. You got me there. Bastard meeting advice and caper. If I cared more, I'd probably say it says something about you. I mean, it did say it so. Lucky for luckily for you, this is already boring me. And how about a drink to keep you with me a little longer? We're on the same wavelength today, dude. Yeah, hit me one, hit me with one of those. Something for those waves in my brain, so you can keep my interest a little longer. I'll mix up something real quick. Would you like a drink? Hello, Andu. Ah, uh, good little sparkly little dragon thingy. With sparkly eyes. Alright, what kind of drink did you want? Some charisma. Alright. Oh yeah, we got some. Inako. Even though they've been traveling for a while, they've never been to the Twilight Chasm and are very curious about the realm of nightmares. What currently keeps them here on Ga- I is the famous singer Voy, whom they lovingly call Voy Boy. Interesting. Alright. What kind of drink do they want? Recipes, recipes. Okay, so there's this one for- What's this one? Actually, it's gonna be another one. Something simple today. Let's be simple. Alright. Three splashes of this. Some purple for everybody. Aha! Some of this. A sparkly nebula. Just for you. Ready? Come and drive. Through the portal. And out of the portal. Quick-witted and mischievous just like you. Sick! This is lit. I'll give you that. Thank you. <gasps> Welcome back, Baya. Thank you. How was your road trip? It was... good. We stopped by my spa. And did mud mass. And did you help them find a way home? Back home? Yes. The forests were lush and green. Hi, Nappy. There is no winning in this game. 
there's only but a drink at a tavern. And while you're here, would you like to grab one? We didn't find any sleeping people, but we ran into a group of meerkats and a rug engaged in a conversation about taxes. The nice ghost even gave me her sunglasses. They're so cool. What else is up? The sky and the sun and no stars. And some trees? No, trees are in the middle. Not an ant. Ooh, ants. So cute. Do you have any ants? Not on me. And you, innkeeper, any ants? Not the moment, sorry. Oh, no ants. Can I offer you a drink as an apology? Yes, make me feel like a little nimble ant. Ant potion. Got it. Alrighty. Ant potion coming right up. Want to make me go zoom zoom. Although I don't think ants are that nimble, but it's totally fine. Alright, let's give a swift strike. Or would a good drink be... Thousand Winds. Wait, no. Really? Thousand Winds isn't speed? Alright, Swift Strike it is, maybe. I could have sworn we had another drink that was fast. Alright. One of these things have to make me stupid with you. Aha! Alright, it's so a little bit of green. Well, two splashes of green. And then one splash of blue. Do a swift strike coming right up. Ding! Here, from my favorite pseudo ant. Oh, this is so tasty. I want to look up at the trees now. I'm sure they'll seem taller. Can I do anything else for you? Yes. Several things. Have you been handing out my coupons? I have. Just recently, I gave some to Voy. Have people been dropping by? They have. And they're really nice. The mud masks are the most popular. And the flowers. Grace said my flower bracelets are her favorite. It must be gorgeous. I'm making new ones just for her. She'll love that. I hope so. Second thing, are you okay? I am Baya, thanks for asking. To be honest, I feel a little dis bit distraught. That other day really didn't unravel me. I'm trying to stay positive, but I can't say I feel the best. Oh no, that's awful. Do you want extra coupons? Or flowers? Flower coupons? I think your company will be quite enough. Oh, nice. But what about lotus flowers? I brought you some in case I needed to cheer you up. Oh, for me? Yes, they are special flowers. 
I've heard they're Ur's favorites, and they bless you with their protection. They also make you feel nimble, like an ant. Thank you very much, Baya. <laughs> I've been wanting to check in on people. I really enjoyed the flood. But I thought about when the Banshee told Mari and me that some people don't like drowning. Correct. I hope I can cheer them up a little. You're already cheering me up. I am? Yeah. I was more Now I have fun. Cheering up the quest succeeded. Yippee. I also have some questions. Ask me. Sorry about that, my nose is feeling a little bit stuffy, or it has been stuffy for a bit. Have you seen Melly anywhere in your swamp? The small cat kid. She might have been investigating her flowers. No, I didn't see a cat anywhere, but I was also very busy tending to my sniffling willows. They need a lot of love. I see. How's your swamp doing? Good. It's so wet now, and there are so many new interesting critters and plants. What kind of plants? Those with teeth? Some have teeth, some have eyes, and spikes, and haunting spirals of long forgotten mistakes. Sick. I gotta check those out. Those ones out. They're nice. They speak just like little horrible birdies. You're one of those people who can talk to plants. Yes. How are they doing? The plants, I mean. Depends on the plant, but they're all very loud. At the moment, they love the water. They hate the water. They complain about the onslaught of the undead. They're ambivalent about the water. What was that? Ambivalent. It means they don't care. But they still want to say something about it. No. The undead. Ah, them. The trees from the pale woods are very upset. They say the squeaky undead keep chewing on their roots and bark and leaves. And the rains? No, they can't reach those. But there's a lot of them. Maybe soon they'll learn how to climb or fly. Huh, the Pale Woods. I've never been there before. Is it a good hangout spot? I don't think so. It's so dry. But maybe the undead like dryness. I would think they prefer bogs. Everyone should. Agreed. Hey, Baya. Can you show me those Twilight Chasm pads? Would love to taste test them. Yes, yes, but you have to help me out hand out coupons first. Do I have to? Please. Ah, uh, fine, but only. Because I'm getting bored again. <laughs> Hooray! Alright, Nampu, thank you for lurking. 
and please keep handing them out to people who need cheering up, innkeeper, including yourself. Will do. Have fun, you two. Thank you. Time for a time skip. Oh, no afternoon today? Just my time? Ah. Hiya, Fable. How's it going? All fine and dandy? Well, fine and... Uh, uh, tired. Actually, uh, not so fine. How come? Well, the city's a mess. So, so is the Grove and, and, and Themis and Dragaren. We still don't know exactly what happened or how. Hi, Water Marlin. Carolyn said, it, it's, it's pretty grave. And then, no one has seen Million Days. A, a lot of people are worried, and, and a, a lot of people are also just aren't. Luna told me not to worry about it either, but... It's hard? Yes, Mary. I, I just want to keep everyone safe. I want everyone to be safe. I, I, I wanted to fix this, uh, whatever this is. Hey, well, I know everything is a lot right now. Especially since... This is the first wave of adventures that you've ever faced. Pun unintended. But Una isn't wrong. A little less worrying wouldn't hurt. I'm sure it's not as bad as it feels right now. i sure someone else will take care of it. It's this one. Sure, it's unpleasant, but worse things have happened. And we've always been fine. Maybe it's just nature, or the dragons are craving change. There's nothing we can do about it. There's all... <sighs> Well, there's always something we could do. You taught me that. Sometimes things sort themselves out, too. It's quite pleasant to wait occasionally. I just wish I could do more. I understand. How about a drink? That's something I can do for you. Not right now. I, I think... Hey. You look... Stressed? Stressed? Why? What makes you say that? I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's great. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's awesome. If you're saying it like that, something must be terribly wrong. How about a drink? A little help for telling us what's going on? Sure. Time for a lovely drink. Alright, Andrew. People are stressed out. People are freaking out. We want some charisma to be made. Let's go a thousand wins. Let's be quick and swift with everything. Oh, we got lotuses now, which is nice. Oh, we can use this one. Ooh, lotus it makes it a lot easier to make this recipe. made it wrong. I was like, something's off. <laughs> okay. One less of that. And a lot of these. Alright, a thousand wins. Ping. There we go. I hope this helps with the word vomit. It does a bit. Thank you. Anytime. So, what happened? Nothing really. Much. At all. I was just taking a stroll trying to find Melina. Checking in on the people Fable asked me to check in on. <sighs> Thank you for that. Yeah, after you helped me calm down last night, uh, I'm glad I could help. So I was, you know, taking a walk around the outskirts of Themis. Walk is good, right? Right. 
So good. I even came across new people. A lot of them were echoes. Did you talk to them? Of course not. I expected nothing else. That's peculiar, though. There aren't a lot of echoes on Gaia. There are now. Apparently, the flood brought in a lot of primordial refugees. Not everyone's comfortable being submerged in water, after all. And they say Leviathan's plane is a mess right now. Oh, I hope everything, everyone has a place to stay. They're looking for places for sure. Some merchants are even offering them rides around Fasoa and beyond. Like Taborkum, for example, which they advertise as the perfect vacation spot. It is. It's right by the Fasoan Wait and See. Very popular with travelers and retirees. Mosky Una lives there currently when she's not bothering me at my tavern. Awesome. Uh, I bet. It's right there. I bet you can relax like nowhere else. Do not, Kumo. You can. There's a wonderful Leviathan Museum nearby, too. Nothing. Nothing at all. So my parents taking a casual trip to Borkum. Huh? Your your parents? Like, their ghost? Was Tua also flooded? Unlikely. I don't think souls can leave the upper world so easily. You're right. It would be difficult for, for ghosts to make it out of Tuat and into a mocktail bar. But being guy and tourist, it's a lot easier to do when you're not actually dead. I'm sorry to ask this of you, but you might have to elaborate a little more. It's simple. My parents aren't dead. I saw them with their with the merchants near Themis booking a carriage and an all-inclusive boat journey to Borkum. They were going on how about how they had a positive outlook on having to leave the primordial sea. How it was like a free vacation, a blessing in disguise. Good for them. But, uh, uh, didn't you see them die? No. I just saw a burning village and couldn't find them anywhere. The foolish conclusion was all mine. So, uh, uh, they didn't die. They just... Left. Yes. Oh. Well, dang. I'm sorry, Kumo. That's awful. So you're gonna kick their asses? I didn't consider that. You should. Might be cathartic. Might be. You did take revenge on the person you thought killed them, so... Ass kicking. Is it happening? I... I'm not sure. This is... I don't know what to do. Do you want to talk about it? No, no pressure or anything. No. Not right now. Kumo, maybe... Anyway, have you found Melina yet? Not yet, but Nidako saw her last at the Moon Swamp. What? About two days ago. But there's a Twilight Chasm portal there, where the Dragon Curse Flood started. Indeed. Did Bias hear? No, she didn't. That's great. That's awesome. That's even better. You've said awesome an alarming number of times. Because this is all so awesome. I'll keep looking for her. There's not a lot you could do without leaving your tavern except... Innkeeper, please. I beg of you, put out a quest to find Melier. Right now, I... I need to figure out what ha to do about my parents before they disappear again. I don't know how much time I'll have. I... She needs to be safe. But I can't go myself. We need to find her. Please, help me find her. I don't exactly have enough information yet, but I'll make sure to find out more and make a quest. And I'll put it up immediately. Are you sure you don't want to go your on it yourself? I want nothing more than for her to be safe. If I don't figure out what to do about my parents, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. I need to. Trust the others to find her. <laughs> well, we will. I promise we will. Please do. I will. I have to.
have to go think. Good luck with that. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Don't. Burn. Down. Your tavern, I mean. Try not to. Someone's worried. <laughs> of course he is. Do you really think Melly's okay? Uh, I hope so. I do. She's smarter than your, than anything she could encounter. I trust her to take care of herself. I do too, but she's just still, she's just a child. A very capable child. A child nonetheless. Wherever, however she is, whether she was just watching the sky or, or trying to unravel a mystery, she might need help. So please, give me that quest. Pardon? Please, give me that quest right now so I can find her. No, it's not done. No, it's not for you. No, it's not for you. What? Whoops, did not mean to twit that one. Uh, oops. Huh, what? I thought anyone could take your quest. If I agree to hand them out, yes. I don't think we have the time to be pedantic right now. There's a certain way things have to be done. Your way? Yes, I'm sorry, but it's just how things are. Because you made them that way. Fable, listen. Maybe more experienced adventurers should take care of this. You just told me not to worry about it. How dangerous could it be then? Well... That's the thing, I didn't mean for this to happen, it was an accident because I clicked the wrong thing. Weren't you encouraging me to go on more adventures just a week ago? Or are you only okay with me leaving when it's something as small as some snails? I just think something like the flood must have been caused by a massive force. Whether worrisome, purposeful, or neither, it's certainly not harmless. And you don't have a lot of experience with adventures like this. Or with different planes, what if she's in the Twilight Chasm? You need to level up before you could stand a chance against true nightmares. Maybe we can get another quest from the farmers. Their fields might have taken a lot of damage. Kumo needs cheering up too. Don't patronize me. I simply don't think you're ready for this one. Why are you being like this? You always say... I should get out of my comfort zone. You encourage me to change, to grow stronger and braver. And now that I do, it's something is wrong? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying the timing isn't right. And why do you get to decide what my timing is? Why should I leave my comfort zone once something is out of is out of yours and it's a mistake? Things aren't that simple. I know. I've lived for over a hundred years. I know that things aren't simple. I also know that they don't change by pretending they aren't there. Or by pretending they're not, they're not missing. Think what you might. The quest hasn't been put up yet, so it cannot be taken. I don't need some sheet of parchment paper just to find her. Just make me a drink. No. Think about this. You might damn both of you this way. You're going to look for someone no one has seen in several days after a giant disaster. She could be anywhere, including in a realm of nightmares you know nothing about. You've never even encountered bleak stalkers, and they'd be the least of your worries here. For adventurers who have faced things worse than this, who will have a much higher chance of bringing her back safely along with themselves. Is this your way of saying you won't make me a drink? Just let it go. Let someone else handle it. 
so that they get hurt instead of me? That's not what I said. But it's what you meant. You don't know what's awaiting you out there. But you do? Of course not. Please, just stay. Of course not. It's a hard choice, but I might not know. But I also know that you don't have all the experience ready, and that's also a mistake by the choice I make. I have clicked what I have sewed, and this is what we're going with. But I can guess it won't be pretty. You know, I never really realized how much you lie to me all the time. You tell me to be honest, but how can I know you're being honest with me? I'm being o I'm always honest with you, Fable. I care about you. Let me help you. Maybe you could take a nap in one of my rooms, and we'll see how you feel after. Enough! I've already made up my mind! Now I've made up mine. I'm not giving you the quest. I'm not making you a drink. Okay. <laughs> I don't need a drink! Don't be ridiculous. Going on an adventure without my help is reckless at best. Foolish at worst. I'm not going to sit around and wait while other people suffer. Not if I have a chance to help them. I'm not like you. You're right. You're not. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. I know I'm going to find way to find Melina. I don't care what it takes. And I'm not going to let anyone stop me. Not even you. Fable. Maybe I should have been more honest. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. If I know anything about Fable, they'll probably befriend the Twilight Chasm, or bake it a cake, sing it a song. Though I don't think the Twilight Chasm is a problem here. No, I don't want to think about that. Not sure what to do with those rumors now. Guess I'll just hang on to them. Well, better close up for the day. Oh dear. Not that one. It has to be the undead. No woods and its surrounding areas have been plagued by undead lately. First undead snails scavenging crops, then humanoid cadavers gnawing away at the forest itself. The local plants can't catch a break. No one knows why they suddenly hunger for the local flora. Some brave adventurers preferably experience the exanimate. Should look into this. I did not mean to make that choice. I'm kind of scared for what it might be. Act 3, The Twilight Flood, Chapter 16, The Pen of the Sword, 20th of the Astral Moon. Oh dear. I really hope things are okay. Hello, brave adventurer. Welcome back to my tavern. Hello, Inkeep. How are you doing? The past few days have been quite eventful. I'm feeling so inspired. My first real adventure was so ex utterly exciting. I haven't stopped residing in my memories ever since we've returned. When I got home, I immediately started writing everything down so I wouldn't forget everything, anything. And it reads just like all of those adventure tales and books from my childhood. Sounds like you had a very good time. It's delightful to see you flourishing. Actually, I've been thinking about switching careers. Oh? How come? All these adventures, don't get me wrong, it's new and exciting. But instead of experiencing them myself, it might be better to tell the tales of those brave heroes and heroes around me. Creating stories is much more enjoyable than facing the dangers of venturing myself. 
I'd love to note the elders mentioned how much they love listening to your stories. You're right. I think Theo would enjoy this idea as well. You... You... You think so? They seemed very entertained but on the trip to Deria. Huh. Perhaps you might be onto something there. On another note, how about a drink to wind down a little? Sure, why not? Any specific wishes? As far as you have something that'll keep me focused on writing. Something to ward off distracting thoughts. Nothing easier than that. I've learned why I can talk to plants and even use some plant measure to fast travel with the lands. The floor at her spot told her about the undead gnong on the roots in the pale woods, and she's suddenly deeply involved in the saving of the world. So I'm reading this, considered an advertising visitor's spa. Okay, so there's some characters we haven't been fully finished out. It seems like there's still so many more adventures to happen, to do, and things and stuff. Oh well. Oh, right, a drink. Defensive, okay. We got Frost Lagoon, I can make a Fresh Snow. Let's go, let's go for the classics today. Tried and true. Oh, Frosted Lagoon coming right up. Ding! A drink for the upcoming best selling author. Very sweet of you. Oh, thank you very much. Though. Oh, this tastes absolutely delightful. I can already feel the words are lining. And patiently are writing. It's you've written down. Don't mention it. I'm always happy to help. Speaking of which, have you by any chance heard of Melina the Famous Detective? As it happens, I have. You get to know quite a lot of people when you run a tavern, you know? Have you seen her recently? Sadly, not in a while, no. I last saw her a week ago, if not two. How curious that you also know her. Meeting such a well-known detective is a fantastic source of inspiration and exciting stories. I've heard stories of her solving the case of the lost familiars in Zofard. Yes, but she solved the case alongside her trusty assistant. Ah, uh, how inspiring. I'd love to tell her tale it's Sunday. Maybe I'll combine it with some of the rumors I've heard about this one mysterious place in the southwest of Asawa. Oh, which one might that be? The Wizard Tower. A magical place full of puzzles, mysteries, and magic. I've heard tales of it harboring hundreds of books containing lost and forbidden knowledge. But that's not all. There are treasures of unfathomable value, and magical trinkets as well. What an exciting thought for a young detective to stumble upon a place like that. Definitely a story I'd read. Promise to send me a copy, please? Oh, but of course. I'd deliver it to you myself. You know, even if we might f be a few years apart, seeing her reminded me of my own childhood. Sure, the circumstances are completely different, and I was never allowed to wander off by myself. But she seemed a little lonely, just like me back then. I was looking for my own adventures. <clears throat> Though, she found them in the real world, while I relied on books. But I'm glad she found an assistant to keep her company. The life of a detective can certainly be a lonely one. And you have Theodore by your side. Do you really think he counts as an assistant? That's for you to decide. He definitely doubles as a friend. But I see the bear of bad news, but well, Melly has been missing since the Twilight Flood. No. Tell me you're joking. Sadly not, I'm afraid. Oh no. 
I hope she's all right. She's probably just investigating the cause of the flood. I'm thinking the same. She might be young, but she's really tough. I doubt even a flood this size would be a challenge for her. Then I'll trust your instincts. Kumo, it's great to see you. I've solved it. Solved what? My parent problem, I've solved it. And how did you do that? It's simple. I'm here to ask you to write up and hand out a quest for me. A quest to find them and to kill them. Sorry, did you say kill them? Yes. Why do you want to kill your parents? Isn't it obvious? Can't say it is. Their death is what sent me on the bleak path that is my life. It led me towards my destiny, my purpose. Which would be stealing, revenge, edginess, darkness. Of course. Now that they're back, it's supposed to get my that purpose. Aesthetic purpose. Right. So I must take destiny back into my own hands. Why not kill them yourself? Why not talk this through instead? Talking doesn't solve anything. Might make you feel a little better, a little less murderous? No. I must embrace who I am. And for that, they must die. So please, quest. Have it done, quickly. As you wish, I'll set it up for you. Thank you, I shall leave you to it. Before you go, how about a drink before the road? Maybe one that'll have you talking about something other than killing your parents? Yes, I should allow them a warning. So I must be deceitful about my feelings. See what I can do for you. Well, let's be silent. And just striking if that's what they want. <sighs> I feel like today everything is going wrong. I worry. Off Abel. I feel so guilty for accidentally clicking the wrong thing. Hondu, here's some more pads. Oh. Right. That's brain. I was like, something missing. Sorry. Thank you for telling me that's the wrong drink. I'm so distracted as it is. Alright, charisma. Your charisma. Thousand wins. I guess we'll be quick about this. But worry. Coming right up. The right drink. Maybe this will help your heart a little. Feels nice. Really warm. Like a hug. Do you need a hug, Kumo? You need to go. Stay safe out there. Sure. And Kumo? Yes. Have you talked to Fable? Yesterday, yes. They left a fight in Melly. I see. Good luck with your parents. I don't need luck. I need vengeance. Does he... Does he need help? Do you want to help them kill their parents? Pardon me? No. Uh, of course not. I meant psychological help. They don't look like they're doing too well, if I might say. It's always quite broy and mysterious, but their parents being alive really threw them off track. You wouldn't think that's a bad thing, really. And now, 
they wanted to kill them just because it doesn't fit the backstory they came up with. This is a possibility for a happy ending to an otherwise dark story. Please don't tell me. You're actually going to set up a quest to assassinate them. I am but a mere innkeeper into this tavern. I'm just following Kumo's wishes. I would have expected you to have a little more backbone. Or more status, so to speak. You were so sure about Melina's well being and even called me down. I can't believe you'd offer such a violent solution. I tried to stop them, but I don't think I can get them to talk with their parents right now. You heard them, and that's exactly why they're still home. Wait, I don't think I understand. Kubo won't take on the quest himself. So there'll be someone else that can talk to his parents. That sounds like a really questionable plan. If I say so, it'll work out. I'm sure of it. Most likely, it won't be a very difficult quest. Especially not if you know your way with words. As an old man, like you would, for example. Oh! Well... I'm still certain that this isn't a quest for me, even though I could probably do it. What if the situation actually escalates into violence? I wouldn't know what to do. No pressure. I just wanted to make an offer. Do you want a different quest, then? Aren't you listening? I don't think I want to be an adventurer anymore. Me and Kumo just now has amplified my doubts. I never want to have to kill anyone ever again. Being a murderer is not how I envisioned my life to be. Of course not. But I also don't know in what direction my life is headed from now on. My heart is still so full of excitement after my last quest and adventure. Hmm. This might only be a tale, but... There's the pl this place of infinite knowledge. Oh? Are you by any chance talking about the... The saturating case of the plane of Uru? I've read so many stories about them. I didn't get a wondrous place. Though, I really doubt a guy in mortal like me could even walk there. I've heard you can get there through the Twilight Chasm. Innkeeper, do you think that's true? That there's a portal to Ur somewhere in the Twilight Chasm? I think that's pretty unlikely. Well, maybe. This world is full of wonders, after all. And since the Twilight Realm arose from Ur's dreams, I'd say it is completely unlikely. Ah, just thinking about the caves makes my heart beat faster and my fingertips itch. Maybe I should write a little story about them. Time to write down some keywords. Or I might lose my ideas. Might lose it all for a while, though. You know, I don't think you need Ur to lead you. Your heart already knows what it wants to do. <laughs> oh, do you really think so? Yes, it's quite obvious, actually. How about you go write down those keywords now? This might already be an upcoming bestseller. Oh, you really are a sweet talker, aren't ya? Oh, thank you for your advice. Goodbye, innkeeper. Until next time, Archie. Good evening, Carolyn. Evening. Has boredom already caught up with you again? It's always on my trail. Guessing this quest is still free? Not for much longer, it seems. Haven't had enough of the undead yet? I've got practice with them now. Might as well make some use of it. Fair enough. I thought you'd be looking for Melly instead. Can't say I'm not worried about the little gal, but Fable's already on it. I trust him. And I trust Melly too, to come back, I mean. She promised me we'd see each other again soon. I learned to believe in people's words. You should too. I do, but trust is a scary thing. Words are empty, actions are loud. And you're more annoying than some hungry undead creature. And you're a pessimist. Good thing you'll be soon be exchanging me for some fresh zombies. Ugh, I guess. 
I also gotta check up on my cousin. Those undead snails are sounding a lot more concerned right now. At least they're even slower than the regular undead. Very common, thanks. Want to take Archie along again? He might be the calming presence you're seeking. Under no circumstances, no. What if you get bored? He has very good stories to tell. Shut up. How will we talk about what did you? How will we talk about what drink you want then? Well, oh, dear me, my dearest acquaintances. Thank you, but damn, Kellen, you look both look radiant today. What are we radiating? I shan't say, as it would be too rude. How polite of you. How are you doing, Scully? Just wonderful. Yesterday, I had the most delightful tea party with the Sir Avons and Lady Frostgrip. Avons and I were able to learn so much about the times we've missed thanks to the young blacksmith prodigy. This world truly is an exciting and beautiful one. By tomorrow, the vampire will have forgotten all about it. But that merely means he'll get to remember again. How marvelous! Then this pursuit of learning is a wonderful, a wonder in and of itself. Speaking of learning, if you'll allow me, I'd like to uh, learn how you are doing on this fine day, guys, Dame Carolyn. You do look a little spent, and I would hate to be intruding on your space. <laughs> Just exhausted by all these people and their constant talking. You're good though. Ain't your fault. Ah, I understand. The social aspects of life can be exhausting as they come with so many rules and are obstacles one must traverse. But throughout this overwhelming obstacle course of model interactions, we can find many magnificent treasures. And all of them make these efforts worthwhile. Like quests. Welcome back, Nappy. I was thinking about friends, but quests too. Are you heading out of one? Yeah. There are many reasons why today could be worse. Why did you spill strawberry milk over yourself, Nappy? Are you drinking in bed again and making chaos? What's its cause? An unusual amount of undead creatures are haunting for so lately. Well, see, that's why you put your drink down, Nambi, before you actually squeeze your whole juice and milk on ya. Especially near the pale woods. Carolyn is going to check on that. An undead gathering in the pale woods? Oh, why so? Is there a convention, perhaps? No, it sounds more like the violent type of crowd. Unfortunately, it does seem that the sentiment is common around my compatriots. Sense and sensibilities are often lost when you are ripped from the afterlife without your soul attached to your body. You don't have a soul. You've got a lot of personality for that to be true. Tr to be true. Well, then I am a nerd. I guess you don't like nerds, Snappy. I see. Does that mean you don't like me? I see how it is. I see where everything falls. Hmm, that is kind of very kind of you to say, but I'm afraid I'm a mere fragment of my former self. Maybe you'll find your way back to yourself one day. An opportunity to find a new self-esteem. Not self-esteem, self then. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> See, Nappy, you like nerds. You're one of those people who are like, Ugh, I don't like them. But in truth, you do. <laughs> hmm, my soul should be securely locked behind two arts walls. But perhaps... There's there are more memories of it stored in there, these old bones somewhere. I wonder.
wonder. Hmm. What my favorite song used to be. My favorite food. Or favorite book. Hmm. The best way to find out is to keep seeking out new experiences to find what calls to that old absent heart of yours. You do like needs? I don't think you like spelling. <laughs> they start needing? More needing? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh -huh. Thank you for the inspiration. Dame Carolyn, would you mind me tagging along on your quest? Sounds like a haven of fascinating research. I've not been able to indulge in the pa pastime for a long while. <laughs> sure, come along. A skeleton should be a great help in wiping out a bunch of undead. Wiping out? Uh, no, by no means should that be our approach. We should study them. Or better yet, let's strike up a civilized conversation. With enough charisma, I'm certain we can remind them of their mortal consciences. Don't be ridiculous, they'll rip us apart. We could simply ask the innkeeper for some additional defense, in case they need some initial convincing. I could even offer you some frost armor to go along with it. A few frozen pine cones here and there, and you'll have a little more of a buffer if your words don't take hold. Ooh, excellent idea! Or we can just fight them, smash their bones together until they stop moving. No offense, Scully. I'm not taken. Though, I believe the cleverer approach would be to rely on speed. Unawakened, undead are rather slow, and so we should embrace this possible advantage. Dexterity, then, and defense. You're right on track with that one. May I suggest adding some of more Morganite Lotus Flower to this combination? Much like Citrin, it will bless your spoken strikes and lend you some of the power of the Great Dragons. The undead are incredibly vulnerable to holy attacks. Ooh, in indeed we are. Indeed we are. The power of the dragons is a difficult one to harness. I'm impressed by your capabilities, and Keeper. I think you'd, your delight should be aimed towards the, ma the magical ingredients. Ooh, to dilute them in such a way is, such, is quite a skill in itself, as is choosing, uh, choosing our approach to this. We should leave this up to them, correct? Yeah, you figure it out, Inkeep. Some additional defense is given, but what should we focus on? Charisma or dexterity? Ooh, and don't forget those wondrous infusions of yours. I would never. You know... As much as I think fighting the undead would be kind of cool, I kind of want to see where it would go if we decided to go with the uh, charisma route. You know, let's go talk to the undead, right? If we talk to them, they can understand us, maybe. Okay, a thousand wins. They want the uh, infusion of the frost kettles, I think. These ones? Yeah. Ooh, this means it's not that drink. It is then... It's not the first snow. I believe in the talking air route. We'll see where it goes. A spoken heart. Come right up. I would like to think that not all these souls or bodies are fully lost. If you can save even one of them, it'll be worth it. Ooh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you for your faith in us, Inkeeper. Ugh, uh, I guess I'll give them a chance. But they start gnawing your bones, I won't hold back. I'm counting on it. Come on, let us make some new friends. Enjoy your travels, your conversations, and your battles. All right.
The Twilight Flood brought more to Fasolo than just the waters of the Pomerola Sea, which are the two long lost air echoes who had faked their own death and abandoned their own child. Now that their kid is out for revenge and long to have been killed, as the fate of tragic book stories builds it, these renegade parents were last seen in Warcom near the Wadden Sea, and the bounty hunters should probably start there. Mission magically possible. The Wizard of Morlia has abandoned his tower on, well, Morlia, a small island near Niverduff and Dalwell. As is custom for, for Wizard Tower, it's said to be full of alluring treasures, gold, magic items, forbidden knowledge, and spells. Anything your looting heart desires, be warned, the wizard is known to have love, puzzles, mischief, and contraptions, so don't forget to check for traps. <clears throat> Hey, Galandu. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And... The last candle. <sighs> Act 3, The Twilight Flood. Set Chapter 17, In Pursuit of Entropy. 21st of the Astral Moon. Let's start the day. You know, your quests are getting weirder by the day. I mean, no one's forcing you to take that one. Unless you have one on Basilisk Swarms waiting in the back, I think I'm good with this one. No Basilisk, I'm afraid. Eager to kill some parental figures? You know it. Speaking of family, you haven't brought your sister by in a while. How is she? I don't know. We no longer speak. Oh. Did, I didn't know that. You two were unbeatable when it came to bar fights. Yeah. I love her, but... She's become a little too much like our parents, so... I need to love her from afar. Or I wouldn't be loving myself very much. Hmm. You're better off for that. For it. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't think better is the right word to use here. Healthier, maybe? Happier. Strangely the same rank. I'm happier without my sister. Who says that? <laughs> Someone who's gone through a lot. Someone who tried. Someone who gave up. Do you regret it? No. It's not my job to fix it. You know, I'm if I wish it was. Uh, and that's just what people do, isn't it? Change until you don't recognize them anymore. It's a way of use force to leave before you both destroy each other. Change is inevitable, but not everyone will transform into something that'll hurt you. Change can be beautiful too. Nice words, but not something either of us believes, is it? I'm working on it. Let me know how that goes. Does Ro got any siblings? Nothing that we know of. Their parents kind of faked their death, abandoned him when he was very young. They haven't exactly been writing postcards. Ah, I guess no one would handle that very well. What do you think about the whole... What do you think about the whole killing the measure? Hmm, adds up to me. It does? Yeah. Not like they have faced any real consequences for being shitty. And it always falls on the kid, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And do you think being murdered is an appropriate consequence? It's not about what I think, love. It's just I'm just taking the job. Right. But I was thinking. Think less, or rather... Think about what you're gonna mix for me instead. 
So you're not even, you're not even hesitating. I'm a bounty hunter, innkeeper. Of monsters, I assumed. Not all monsters look like us, look unlike us. I thought you don't do charity. I don't. I expect a hefty payment by the end of this. That thief must have some jewels stored away, or is my right? Mm -hmm. I, I see. So, drinks. Drinks, of course. Murder. How would you like to approach it? With a lot of force. I don't know how strong they are, but I need to be stronger. Maybe some defense in the mix would be good too? If the attack patterns turn out to be more complex than you thought? It seems like you do listen to me sometimes. <laughs> the stories of fight. Your stories of fighting mirages. And three headed scandalopes are far too compelling to forget. Hmm. I'd hope so. You still got any of those frozen pine cones lying around? The ones you gave me for the mountain mimic? If those deadbeats are picked up on some primordial magic, I could use some elemental protection. Whoever is always, Jade. Obviously. Plus, that frost armor is pretty cool. Luckily for you and your coolness factor, no. You and your health, I got a big shipment of them in the last month. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'll take some of those then. They're not contending with any other approach? No, unless... Unless? Hmm, I guess there's another way. Is there? Listen, some things aren't fixable. I'd saw both of my legs off before I ever talked to my folks again. But this wound is fresh. Mm, could be possible. But the delay the inevitable. I could convince them to leave, scare them off, banish them somewhere where they can't hurt him. That way he can find them later if he ever changes his mind. Maybe this rift isn't completely irreparable after all. Sounds like you're asking for some charisma. And some speed. It should hurry up before he does some anything drastic himself. Yep, some dexterity might help too. You never know how they could react. Might have to dodge some blows. <laughs> might have to. You've got any of that inspiration in the garbage lying around? I'm not go so good with words. When it comes to situations like this, I, I might have to inspire them to be a little less awful. I could offer you either thunder sage or honey flowers, whether, whatever flavor you prefer. Hmm, you choose about it all. Charisma, dexterity, inspiration, it's the less violent route. That's not what he asked for. So I won't complain about the strength and defense mix either, as long as you throw frost on them. I think my decision about this would be tinted by my own experiences, so please a little help. Always, Jade. Thank you for asking. I'll make sure you to leave Onyx some leftovers. She's thirsty. Alright. So we choose battle or talk it out. I choose talk it out. Because <laughs> why not? What plush do you want today, Nampy? What color? You don't get to pick size, you just get to pick color. No, no new plushies. Why would I get new ones? <laughs> white? Okay. I don't have like pure white plush anything, but I do have a white Cute. I thought about grabbing one to show that you have well, that you've seen before, but then I was like, no, I don't want to say the line, because I know Nabby would be like, ah, it's the line. Here we go. This is what we got today. Wish. Ah, thank you for some water. It helps with the, with the throat and stuff. 
No, it won't sit on the mic. My mic doesn't hold it. It can't. Sorry, Nampy. Alrighty. Let's get a drink. Maybe this cause isn't as lost as we think it is. Because it can't be reasoned with. Thank you for the treat, Nampy, but I'm not hungry. Funny enough, I'm not hungry. Oh, you want me to stretch after I sat down? How could you do this to me? It's funny, some of those are retaining shape and some of them are actually getting saggy. Kinda silly. I can always trick them and kill them that way, yes. Hmm. I guess you could. But I guess I'll try mm, talking first. Let's hope this is the right choice. Hmm? Don't you trust me? You wish. Don't forget to fill me in on your success. If I have any charisma left in me, you'll be sure to hear all about it. <laughs> Until then, don't tell him what I'm doing. I should keep this a secret between us. You do love those, typical fae, I guess. Don't take too many names while I'm gone. I wouldn't dream of it. Oh. Okay. Nah, man. You gotta be careful with that ethereal bamboo. I mean, it's super cool and all, but if you cut it the wrong way, it's gonna charge up and... Whoosh, gone. You are sucked into the ethereal weave. Ooh, well... You know, like those fishies that'll kill you if you cook the wrong way. Fish. Yes. They look like spalls with spikes. Don't know about the name, though. Do you mean puffer fish? Do you mean sea urchins? That. Oh, wait. You're also here. Oh. I sure am. You're looking fire. Nice drip. Thank you, Aniko. Nico, Nico. Hmm, can we stay on topic, please? Topic? Um, ah, uh, right. So, I heard any type of vibration can trigger a small rift. It's like disturbing a sleeping dragon, wrong move, and the world's faltering, and whatnot. Hmm, so you're saying, you're saying, if I use my bow the wrong way, I could open a rift and be lost in the ethereal wave. Bet, would suck big time, but alas. Though, can't be entirely sure, I mean, what's the fun in knowing everything for sure? Don't be basic, embrace the chaos. As long as you're, you don't play any wrong notes, you should be fine. <laughs> Nothing easier than that, especially under pressure. Especially then, I'm sure. 
Then you have nothing to worry about, friend. Might even come in handy one day. The person who made your instrument must have had the least... Like... One thought about making it like that. Hmm. They did. Many thoughts, actually. Quest taken. Good mythical morning, innkeeper. I know, theopractically, it's early afternoon, but eh, who cares? Good theopractical morning, Hex. Good afternoon, Hex. Almost there, you forgot the mythical. Good mythical theopractical morning. Better. Okay, listen up. I found this little leaflet on your noseboard. And I saw you're finally sending someone out to investigate that abandoned Windsor Tower, and I just decided that someone is me. I've been wanting to see what's up with up there for a while now. Talk about good timing. Talk about good timing indeed. Did you say Wizard Tower? What's the tea? <laughs> well, there's an abandoned Wizard Tower near near Niverduff. On a small island called Moralia. Ah, the one with worms. I think you can find worms in any ecosystem. That's what they like you to think. Sure. Either way, no one has seen the Wizard of Moralia in quite some time. So they say. And I've been dying to know what he might be hiding in his tower. Vent lots of explosives. I'm more hoping for scrolls and ancient magic and semi-cursed objects. Oh, and of course, books of forbidden, not forgotten knowledge. Uh, rumor has it you left behind quite the hoard of peculiar trinkets. Surely, after all, as it states in his leaf, in this leaf of traps, puzzles. Must be something very valuable hidden in there. Maybe even the key to immortality. Or they were bored. Admittedly, I don't design puzzles when I'm bored, though. I blow things up. I love when things go boom. Same. You know what? What? I think you should take me and Boy Boy along. Listen, yo, you say trinkets and I'm all in love. I mean, the entropy we create if we troubled as a trio would be immaculate. We'd be able to tackle the wizard's puzzles and deathly traps with wits and violence. <laughs> mm, music. You have my lockpicks. And my Hagen, maybe the ethereal weave could even help. Ethereal bamboo, huh? But an ethereal weave escape would only work with shaping the silk. Huh? The ghost spider champion uses their silk to spin the weave. Hmm, good thing that these strings are made of shaping silk then. Great. Then we can use your Hagen as our plan C escape plan. Should the wizard be at home after all? Or foster any monsters in any traps, your Hagen will be our way out. Hmm, by dipping into the ethereal weave. Don't worry, it's like dreaming or teleporting. You'll just have to find your way out, back out. <laughs> we'll manage that. I'm a master teleporter. And I'm sure. Whoop. Nampy, why? Also, Nampy. Friday night, you might have to stay up really late. But I'll tell you why later. But have a good, uh, have fun saving. I'm just a good time zone. No, that's the wrong one. Ha have fun saving Gotham. Keep it safe. And I'm sure our ranking friend here has the right drink for you. And perhaps that'll give you some brain cells. And quick reflexes. So. I'm hasty, and can easily be traps. Good that that I don't need help with either. 
but shouldn't we be able to fight back freely? In case something is left in the tower. But lots of traps probably means lots of fire. And the survivor system would be helpful too. Fighting sounds so good. I'd love to kill something, but I hate making decisions. The gamekeeper should decide what to make. Okay. So, something strong to barge in and fight our way through paired with fire resistance to provide little traps, or something for our brain that focuses on fo that fuels us focus with use of haste. I'll see what I can do, but don't hold me responsible for whatever ends up happening. We would never, ever. All right. Nico is not opposed to violence and loves blowing things up. Even, or maybe especially without any reason to do so. Lately, they seem to realize that being dependent on a team isn't half bad. It can even be fun, especially when you e when some equally chaotic acquaintances keep you company. Ooh. We love chaos. I mean, sometimes. Uh, lots of things going on around the world. Why do these things, like, stop happening? Alright, so we can either go with the brute force route of traps and be defensive, or we can go zoom zoom. Let's be smart. If this puzzles, you gotta be smart. You can't just be like Vox Machina struggling through every door. Alright. So an infusion of haste. What gives haste again? Okay, Saber Fang. Alright, and that gives plus. Okay. Recipe for zoom zooms. Not this one. Which one gets haste then? It's been a hot minute. Okay, the golden feather does as well. Good. Wait, then I can't make it with that one. Are there any other ones that give haste besides that one? Hmm. See, so none of these give the infusion that I need though. Oh wait, I need brain power. Oh my gosh, I can't read. I need brain. With a little bit of speed. Alright, so the saber teeth should be just fine. Alright, so the slash of red. A lot of brain. That's just what we need. Alright. Your little silent owl, perfectly ready, and here for you. Have a lovely drink. Here you go. Brains and quick reflexes. Thanks! I'm sure this will be of use for solving puzzles and innovating traps. I'll be sad if, uh, if not one thing explodes. Explosions could damage all the loot. But... Maybe afterwards, we could light a little fire. You know what we should do? What? We should take Jay along. She'd definitely be interested in the treasures too. Hmm, an additional plate couldn't hurt. Any idea where we can find her and keep? I'm afraid she's already on a quest, so probably nowhere nearby. That's fine, we'll poach her. Good luck. But good luck. Thank you. We shall return with a story worth telling. I can't wait. Bye, loser. Here you go, Andu. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And... There goes the candle. Act 3, Twilight Flood, Chapter 18. A well-deserved break, 25th of the Astral Moon. Let's start this day. It's 
funny. Some chapters feel super long and other chapters feel very short. Hello, Inky. Look what I found. Looks like a rare specimen of Archie to me. I'm one of a kind. <laughs> oh! You two know each other already. Of course you do. You know pretty much everyone in this city, huh? Of course I know. He's quite the celebrity in town. No. Oh, I suppose I am. He's his most famous author. He even survived an assault by hordes of the vicious undead. Uh, author? I, I guess I really am an author, yes? Bummer. And here I thought I could surprise you. Uh, how did you two meet? I think he spotted me on, on the street. You must have thought I had a lot of stories to tell. So, he asked me if he could write my biography. What a unique way to call someone old. But she does have a lot of stories to tell. Archie, how many manuscript topics do you want to collect before you actually finish something? Well, you see, it's always important to collect ideas. Life itself is the best source of inspiration for any artist. Look at him. He's all eager to write. I just couldn't refuse that look at his big, sparkly eyes. <laughs> Writing down ideas is so much fun. There's a magical detective story. Theo is my adventure with the undead. And now Una's biography as well. It's fantastic. I suppose you're right. Una, how come you want your, girl, your biography to be written now? I don't really. I have a reason. I'm old, and I've seen a lot of stuff. What would be sad if all that knowledge went to waste, right? It's not like you'll disappear any second now, is it? Of course not. I get it. A lot of terrible things have been happening lately. Ah, don't be silly. We'll be fine. <laughs> it's always nice to... You see, most of your friends return during these times like these. Mm, most, most of them. Hi, Forest Steel. It's going well. I'm just enjoying like the storyline. How are you doing? Stuff like this happens every few decades. It's completely normal. If you say so. Are you going to pay Archie accordingly, though? That's what I'm here for. I'm going to pay for him in drinks. And I also uh, could use a little refreshing drink myself. I gotcha. Anything specific you'd like today, Archie? Uh, just the same as always. Uh, a drink to stay focused on my writing to defend my brain against all those distracting thoughts. Coming right up. Alrighty, it's in defense. Good old Frost Lagoon or First Snow? Let's have a First Snow. Now, what helps make it First Snow again? Alright, so we can do that. Ha, ah, first snow. Pat. Uh, I mean, yeah, I like my story-based games. They're really fun to me. So I like trying different ones, or dating some. Those are fun too. But I also enjoy other games as well. Here you go. A drink to boost your concentration. Thank you very much, dear gamekeeper. Though, uh, this is delicious. I can feel an irresistible itch in uh, in my fingertips already. I've seen the Ace Attorney games. They're not for me, I think. Like, they're fun. I used to be into it, but not for me nowadays. I'm always happy to oblige, so Luna, what's it for you today? Hmm, maybe something 
then I'll give me enough strength uh, and uh, energy to tell this whippersnapper every little detail of my life. Yeah, that sounds about right. Alright, give me a quick second and I'll be back with your drink. All right. Some fight. Some fighting words. All right, let's add some Sailor's Courage. I always make Sailor's Courage for Una, because I'm just like, well, it's Una. Una likes fighting. So this works just fine. All right. It's two splitches and splashes of red. A bit of orange. And, oh. Oh, so, then, nope. That's not what we're making today. There we go, the Sailor's Courage coming right up. Ooh. Some liquid stamina for the Golden Girl. Let's see if your skills are to be trusted and keep. Oh. Archie, I hope you're ready for at least 600 pages. Mm, that's a lot but you already agreed so you don't have a choice <laughs> now my dear Archibald we'll begin with the writing thank you for your hospitality and keep I'll see you later goodbye and keeper I'll remember to keep a copy of, of the book for you sign please of course very well goodbye you two one of the new notes that popped up. Their experience is one must undergo in life to determine their future. Archie realized the life of an adventurer was nothing like he imagined it to be. And that's okay. Now he knows his desire for the pen outweighs that of the sword. I'm very excited to get my hands on some signed copies of his work. Oh, Minty. <sighs> what advice did I give you if it's if finally my surface beast and I have returned? Welcome back, Minty. Good to see you, Innkeeper. And surprisingly, the tavern's dry interior. I thought you might be appreciating the dampness of almost everything nowadays. Maybe while underwater. Hope heels and mud do not mix. On land, I appreciate structurally sound and smooth wood flooring much more than its soggy alternatives. That bad? You would too. Just step a few minutes past your tavern. Then you might get an idea of the things jammed in my spook smokes and smooshed between Casket and Kane's toes. I'll pass. How many Ace Attorney games are there for, Steel? Besides, stories from my patrons are much more enjoyable. Speaking of, how did the pearl hunt go? Honestly, it wasn't all too eventful, but before I go on, I could do what with one of your drinks, Innkeeper. Something to keep my mind clear of any irrelevant distractions for the journey back. And how much time did it take to play all of those? Let me see what I can do. Alright, some brain power. Let's see. Let's just make a peak sunrise. Actually, wait. Honey breeze. No? A sparkling nebula. Let's keep it simple today. I'm sure you could have a guess of how long it took you. Alright. Ding! May this inspire boundless creativity. Hmm, just what I needed. If only I had a boundless supply of this drink while writing up my desk. Oh dear. Unfortunately, my establishment doesn't do deliveries. Hmm, what a shame. Before you go on, I actually have something else for you. Ah, and here I thought I'd have to needle you for it again. What a pleasant surprise. My favorite kind. Here, a completely proofread manuscript, I hope. 
I certainly hope it's completed. Since my retrieval and proofreading have been such a long time in the making, yes? Right. Long in the making. You should probably wash that red ink off your hands before it stains your mugs. Oh, right, right. I was editing my recipes all night. Crazy story, actually, for another time, that is. I see. I will say, it's good to have these papers back in my hands. May I inquire as to why you asked for them back now? I've decided to finally publish the book. What I have written about it is very dear to my heart. And I'm happy to finally get to share my writing with the world. Minthi, the author. It has a nice ring to it. It'll be Mackenzie Catrin Pitchen, actually. A very nice pen name. It was time I finally chose one, and something universal at that. Procrastination is a curse all of its own. Sure is. So, about the pearl, or pearls. Protection pearls, like I said, it wasn't too eventful. I had tea with the Banshee of the Lonesome Lagoon and she traded me the pearls for objects of her desire. Mostly I promised her a signed copy of the book. Good for her. You know, I've been to ask if I may, what do you need the pearls for exactly? I know you're often looking for them, but I was never quite sure why. Well, I'm sure you remember the curse I was bestowed with. Yes, the cursed parasitic rings that amplify your magic to a painful degree. Exactly. Those, they cause quite a little lot of issues for me and my body. Sometimes it feels like the magic is eating away at me, slowly feasting on my organs and nerves. It's tearing me apart from the inside out as it gradually takes my health and life. The protection pearls help me keep the mana in check. They bring it down to manageable levels. It helps the pain a lot. So you're saying you turn the pearls into a drink? Wonderful to see that's your, still your first solution to everything. Yes, on occasion, mostly I grind them into ink for my tattoos. They're very versatile, little beauties. I'm happy you could find some then. Now that I think about it, care to share? I'm sure they'd be great for my drinks. Not so fast. For most people, they just amplify mana to ridiculous and dangerous degrees. And I don't want to be held responsible for the chaos your page could cause. However... Maybe I can offer you something less extreme, but still energizing. Here. Is this... your infamous coffee recipe? After all these years, you finally trust me with it. It's time. I think you can finally make it without poisoning someone. I'll do my best. Thank you, Minthi. Perhaps it will also help you keep your promises in mind. Anyhow, I think we're due to take our leave. Need to make some ink? Something like that. Plus... I promised Casket and Kane we'd check if any primordial tennis balls got washed up by the flood. Hmm. I see. I see. That's what we make today. I think I might have seen something in the bushes. Maya might be able to help you make some moss balls. What a perfect excuse to catch up with her. Is she around? More frequently recently. It's nice. A miracle she still comes around after you, you exercised her favorite bog body. We were young and inexperienced, it happens. That it does. It was lovely to see you again, Innkeeper. Likewise, best of luck on your journey. Don't forget to send me a copy of that book. You promise not to forget about its existence this time. I'll do my very best. I know you will, friend. I know you will. Wow, another day ended? There you go, Andu. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And a little bit of the wind. <laughs> Goes the candle. Act 3, Twilight Flood. Chapter 19, Remnants. 27th of the Astral Moon.
Adelage? Oh. Jade, welcome back. How was your was your quest successful? When have I ever failed? Well, you do look surprisingly unbloodied. Also, hello, Kumo. Kumo? And who's Kumo? That guy. New name, I'm guessing? No. No names here. Never had a name. Don't even know what names are. Am I just supposed to go along with that? You're supposed to make me a drink. Then we can talk. Fair enough. What can I get you? I've still got plans after this, but Onyx is pretty tired. So give me something that'll get her to keep up with my speed if I have to let if I let her have a sip. Anything for Onyx. Her turtle with a septum piercing. So zoom zoom. We need some zoom zoom for a turtle. Zoom zooms. That's all we have. That's the only fast trick we got. Alright, a splash of blue. A splash of purple. And a lot of green. Alright, a swift strike coming right up. Bing! There we go. A drink for Onyx and you, but mostly Onyx. Hmm, not too bad. Concerning you, see, t concerning to see you know me so well. Being a regular does have its perks. So names. Also, so do I actually get to know that person that came in? No, they don't get a character profile. They just visit. Good to know. Let's start with the story first. You love those, right? You know it. I'll spare you the details of my journey to Morkham. Though I don't, didn't miss the chance to take, make some extra money along the way. Everyone thought I was the right woman for their jobs. They helped me with the quest too. I squeezed a good description of the renegade parents out of some doom, red doom merchant. Who was in a deep dispute with a blue crown elephant. I'd love to hear that story actually. Not my problem. Asking a couple of pointed questions got me to the inn the deadbeats were staying at. But with people, you just can't exactly kill them in broad daylight. The monsters you'd be thanked for doing so. But with people, you've got to be patient. So I did what anyone would have done in my situation. I posed as a tour guide. And they believed you? Sure, dude. And it goes right. <laughs> Your drinks are great for pulling scams. <laughs> Happy to hear that. I offer them a tour of the nearby modern sea. I led them to an area I knew was shunned by actual tour guides because of the unpredictable tides. I gave them a spiel about how a battle of the Order of Starlight took place there, yada yada yada. Pretty soon, their eyes were glued to some starfish playing in the mud. It was the perfect opportunity to get it over with quickly. Obviously, I wasn't going to kill them just then. They just needed a chance to run. But I had to scare them first. I raised my spear right up above my head. I was about to go for a 1A strike. But I heard this zinging sound. Like the knife that was flung my way at the last second and it shattered against the ground. All three of us turned and saw this cloaked echo reaching for another knife. Yet his hood up. Pulled up, knives and daggers dropped all over his body. Even the air seemed to go darker around him. It looked like a real shadow bane. I trained under them. Impressive. Those dead beasts thought I was breaking them from them. I should have seen the look on their faces when I said I was there to kill them. I turned back, wanted to refocus on my warning strike when I was interrupted by a simple stop. Was said in this deep, raspy, incredibly fake voice that sounded like some sort of problem degenerate. Likely the two bums thought that we were fighting about who'd get to kill them. 
Their approach was to their approach to the situation was to immediately try to unprime us. I told them to shut it. They asked me what I wanted then, if it wasn't money or words. So I told our little Shadow Bane and asked what he wanted. I just stood there quietly. Can't blame them. There's a little scarier than your parents. So you helped them with the decision? Not exactly. I walked over to him and headed in my spear. She said, This is your choice. Make it. It felt like she was passing some of her courage onto me. He stepped forward, put my spear in his hand, and took off his hood. He was the. I'll spare you the details. And they recognized him, of course. But I had the audacity to act surprised. Surprise is one way to put it. When they talked, they sounded so... Like they thought I had died. You could have, and they left you. I wanted to say something. Anything. Yell, tell them to get lost, scream at them for what they had done to me, but... All I came out was, why did you leave? Their silence went on for so long. It would have been longer. Those tides had to come rushing in. You did kind of walk into that one. Kind of. Luckily, I was quick and got all of us up on some muddy rock that the waves couldn't reach. How long were you up there for? A couple of hours. Left us a lot of time to talk. Did you? Yes, a lot. For example, did you know the primordial flood was caused by the pyre erupting? The pyre? You mean the biggest volcano of all of Asteria nestled right in Leviathan's domain? Yeah, apparently it erupted and then collapsed, covered all of the primordial sea in ash and set off a tsunami. It should not be doing that. No, do you think powerful magic was afoot? Probably not. What use is a giant tsunami to anyone? Maybe they wanted to be wet. Probably not. Are tsunamis and their causes all you and your parents talked about? No. Mostly we talked about the leaving thing. They... They said it was not a day went by where they didn't forget what they'd done. I asked why they didn't come back then. They didn't have an answer for that. Mom said she was proud of my knife throwing skills though. Never thought they'd apologize. They'd owned up to all of it. As awful as it was, I hadn't planned for that. They wanted to make up for everything and be a part of my life. They also said it was up to me what I wanted. What do you want? A family. Is that stupid? No, it's not. So you forgive them? No, not yet. I have to see if they actually mean what they meant first. I can't trust them now. Not them right now. We don't really know each other anymore. Who knows if we'll get along? But they did say they want to get to know me, and I think I might like that too. They're just so different. It feels like I'm angry at people that don't exist anymore. You should be careful. They're still allowed to be angry. If they change, they hurt you. Neither forgiveness nor forgetting is required. It just feels unfair, like I'm harboring resentment for ghosts. But I try to be honest with them. I owe them that to myself. Plus, Jay threatened to decapitate them if they ever hurt me again. They stand no chance. None. Can I have a drink now too? Sure, let's trade. Right. A secret? No, a name. I assume Jade didn't know you as Kuma because your parents didn't call you that. Correct. What did they call you then? I... I don't... I'm not... I will trade you my name. Just give me... Just give the guy a drink. Your first name. Those are quite precious to Maida, right? Very. See, it as a secret to trade for. 
I'm listening. Alicia. A beautiful name. I keep that to myself too. I, that's rude. A beautiful name. I don't respond to flattery. But thank you. <laughs> Definitely better than mine. Yours fit you. Fits you. Does not. If you say so. So, not Ulyssia. What would you like in exchange? Um, uh, maybe. Something that'll stop me from choking on my words. I guess I have to do more of this emotional thing. I've definitely got something for that. Alright. Some more charisma to be made. Let's have more thousand wins then. Two splashes of blue. And then a little bit of this. A thousand wins coming right up. Hmm? What are you talking about, Force Steel? What are you talking about, Pentacone? Are you playing Home Guy right now? Oh, you mean the Pentacone event of making drinks? Kind of, kind of, but it's in its own way it's different because it's more D and D tied, and based. Because Honkai was more like viscous and like sweet and what kind of versions of drinks you would like. It just took me a second. Here you are, some fluid emotional vulnerability. It tastes a lot better than it sounds. It feels a lot better too. If you ever want to watch me play Honkai, I'll be, I usually play gacha games on Monday. I still need to call you something though. Something else though, if Kumo is out. It is. What have you got for me then? I don't. I'm running out of names. Jay, can I? No, my name. My name. Fine, how about? Um... Dave. You know what? Sure. I'll go with that. I'm proud of you, Dave. For everything you've done, gone through, and for choosing what's right for you. Thank you. Do you need a hug? May have already got one from Jade. Speaking of me, I've got to go. Want to check in with Grace and her goons? See you around, there, boy. See you around, Alicia. What about you? Care to linger around a little longer? I... I need some time to think. All is over. Maybe you feel... It, too. Is Fable back yet? I think Cheesecake wouldn't make for a great detraction right about now. No, I thought maybe you ran into them on the way back. I didn't. So Melly isn't back yet either. No, I'm afraid not. Cool, great. Guess I'll talk to... Carolyn? Your parents? Maybe. Nope, he's not out yet. You'll have to wait... Let's see. Event's ending about like this week. I actually don't know. Probably like a month and a half more to two months. Do you still think they love me? I don't know. I hope they do. I hope they'll love you well. And I don't know. I do know that other people love you. And if your parents fail to live up to what you deserve, you won't be loved any less. I... I'd like to believe that. Sometimes I just think, if even my own parents could leave me, anyone can. <laughs> Don't measure your worth by the actions of the people that hurt you. Nothing good can come of that. I'm very thankful to have met you. Anyway, I'm also part of the night. Whatever, so I must go. 
Farewell. Farewell. See you soon. There you go, Hondu. Some lovely snakes. Some sweep, 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 sweep. And the candle. <sighs> Act 3 The Twilight Flood, Chapter 20 Chaos Protocol, 30th of the Astral Moon. Alright. Chapter 20 will be the last one we do today. Keeper, surprise! Nice to see that you're back. Is Fable with you? No, should they be? They were looking for you. They aren't a very good detective then. I'm happy to see you're well, Millie. Everyone was worried about you. Why? I'm great at taking care of myself. You are, but where have you been all this time? Investigating things, obviously, like the flood. My investigation led me to Moria, or more like they did. Nico, boy, and Hexite—I mean, I followed them to Moria. They were talking about mysteries and puzzles, and I tried to solve a mystery, so I couldn't let the opportunity pass me by. You're lucky. People usually pay me a lot of money to spend time with me. Why? But b because. I'm, like, famous? But I didn't go there because of you. I was following clues. Okay. I stayed outside. My kiss isn't about a wizard. Not this time. Where's Hex anyway? You know, I'm doing wizard things. Like studying? Like arson? That would've been fun, but instead he chose to study. You immediately wanted to check out the spells we you found. Though, you seem pretty disheartened. How come? Not sure. I guess he didn't find what he was looking for. Maybe because the world's greatest treasure was already traveling with them. <laughs> what would that be? Me? N never mind. He told us to keep an eye out for any time we match Razzle Dazzle. But we found nothing. At least we managed to get inside and return safely. Yeah, the way there was easy peasy. We got there thanks to Nico pulling off a shape shifting trick and pretending to be a merchant. Stole some guy's fur co guy's coat and face, and used his reputation to cure us a boat ride to Moria. Said I wanted to meet with a real estate agent from the Mogocracy by the island. I told him to pick us up in a week or two, but I then only got, got far gone. <laughs> what happened once you reached the island? I'm quite intrigued. Before we tell you anything, I'd like a drink. Something that goes down like honey and will make my poetry flow like a wild river. Nothing easier than that. Alright, some more charisma. Hey Jay, turns out she went no content with her family a while ago. Although she's surprisingly good at solving disputes others have with their parents, she also received the honor of learning her first name. It fits her very well. And the adorable turtle's name is Onyx. Might in naming schemes, you know? You already knew that for a while now, though, for the turtle name. Alright, what is good with charisma? I think we'll go with the symbol charisma. Maybe. Mm, Sunny Breeze? Yeah, let's poke it hard. Three splashes of yellow. And a bit of red. And a smidge of blue. Right up. Some honey for those vocal cords. Enjoy. 
And that's what I'm talking about. Amazing. Can I move on to the story now? You got somewhere to be? Nah, but I'm getting bored. We got to Molia on an island so small, basically, the tower's bug backyard. As I walked between the crystal and roses, I expected to see past you could pass to where he's hiding on every corner. It almost brought me back a rise. Why didn't you? It wasn't where it fit my time. I thought you wouldn't like it. I would have. Oh, okay. That's, um, moving on. The tower itself reached so high, I thought it might be reaching out to kiss the moon itself. It was, uh, really tilted. At about a five degree angle, I measured it with my paws. The bricks were still wet. I'm sure the tsunami shook its foundation. I would think the waves would have done us a favor and knocked down the door, but nope. That locked door was the first challenge. And because lockpicks broke, seemed like a skill issue. Broke? Skill issue? Bro, the door ate my lockpicks. Ah, a dormant mic. Classic first step to securing your establishment. You talk like you've seen one before. Have you ever tried to open my door when it's closed? No. If you do, don't use any lockpicks and take care of your fingertips. So, how did you get inside? My chopping it. Hex forgot his spellbook and couldn't get the arcane lock unlocked. Spelled the work. And obviously, it wouldn't let us in just like that. So I decided to play the Mimica too. Yeah, that was amazing, bro. Your fancy tunes are the goat. I was nervous. Uh, I'd never played in front of Mimic before, so I wasn't sure what that taste of music was. I decided to play something emotional, something that would melt its metaphorical heart. The song of Whoa. What it thought. It literally melt. Yeah. I began playing the first two and log started a week before I reached the chorus. Tears were streaming down its face. Alright, Force Steel, thank you for stopping by. To use at some other point. And as if they were very hot or made of acid, the door melted away. Afterwards, Lop lay in the puddle of wood, sobbing and thinking of my performance. That's not a very sturdy lock. It's lock. It just sounds very in touch with the, its emotion. We stepped off the doors and remains into the tower. It's so much taller and bigger on the inside. The pocket dimension is so freaking cool. Except the tower can't really fit in your pocket. Bet. X blocked ahead. The guy was really distracted. And he even listened to my poem about the symbiotic relationship between X and the door. For a long time, we didn't encounter anything, just a long hallway, no doors, only a bunch of strange paintings. Of course, most hallways can't go on forever, so eventually we reached the staircase. After what felt like five and a half minutes, eternity. Meanwhile, I was outside investigating the floor and fauna. It was very peculiar, like it was all from another world. Colors were different, very blue and almost spectral. There were a lot of spider webs, or yarn, not sure which. Suddenly, the ground shook and almost knocked me off my feet. Who could have guessed there were pressure plates on the stairs? I wasn't paying attention and it was too careless. A wrong step and a pressure plate triggered an explosion and... Clunk! The whole staircase began crumbling into, into a pit of nothingness. Bit by bit, starting from the bottom. I rushed upwards to safety and away from the weird wizard abyss. I stumbled if it hadn't been for Hex, I oh, would be mush. He grabbed my hand and pulled me up. But it isn't really the strongest, so we almost tumbled down together instead. I figured I couldn't just leave them to fall to their pathetic destiny. I zoomed down to grab Hex by his collar and pulled down both him and Voiboy Boy back up. Thank you for saving us, Nico. No problem, Voiboy. Boy. Don't get used to it. Didn't you expect a trap like that? After all, a great wizard would want to protect the treasure. Um, I guess we were a little attracted by all the gold hanging from the walls. 
As I case ended up in a wondrous library that spiraled endlessly higher on towers inside walls. But we lost a hex at the bottom, in the first row of books. The last them were drenched. It didn't seem like the tower was waterproof. There was still probably water dripping from somewhere above. I couldn't make out the ceiling, try to reach it though. The second story of the spiral staircase library had three paths leading away. Each path ended in a door, and all three doors were closed and locked with runes or paintings or rusty old locks. I got sucked into looking at the library's beautiful murals. Each of them depicted a different story. One of them was a mosaic of mirrors, and that one was my favorite. Watching Hex look at books was like reading a thriller. Almost every second, the book was rigged with a trap, but he figured out the pattern quickly. Something, something, Fibonacci, I don't know. Once I was able to try myself away from the murals, I started looking for spell things. I knew Hex was mostly interested in those, and you know, you can help when you can. I didn't. I mostly looked at all the small treasures lying around. Wizard had his this real cool staff with a chonker of a gemstone bed at the top. Imagine the damage I could do with that. But I also found something else that was really cool. Here, take a look. It's dope, right? What is this? Weather jar, duh. Shows what the weather is like in another realm. I see. Let me guess. Avalon? Where do you get it? I found some spell scrolls. One of them had golden runes on it. Hex liked that one, but he left, you know. Then nestled between a few red velvet armchairs, I found a glass case. It had a golden frame, and a scroll placed lay inside, neatly in the middle, but was floating all that. I knew Hex was looking for more spells, so I called for him. So as I mentioned, that oddly floating scroll, he came sprinting upward, staring at the glass case. I already had another scroll tucked into his coat. I honestly expected him to be carrying half of the library at that point, but I guess that would have been too heavy for him. Of course, the stupid glass case was also a puzzle. I had no lock and no lid and no nothing. It was glass in a gold frame. The scroll itself was glowing a promising tube blue. I suggested breaking the glass. Hex gave me his finest death glare. So he investigated the puzzle himself. Wait, so he investigated the puzzle himself. While they were doing boring side quests, I made sure to stuff my pockets. I found a jeweled silver paper blade shaped like a bird that'll make for a great blunt weapon. X was too scared, so we scared we destroyed the scroll by triggering another contraption, so he suggested we looked around and get some rooms. The real drawers. Hex only knew how he had to look at them for a mere second before figuring them out. Apparently, all of these murals and runes were referencing a story hidden somewhere behind in the library. So he made us search for it. It was tricky, but we didn't want to trigger the book traps after all. It was like the library knew what would tempt us the most. I kept seeing books about forgotten songs, rare instruments, and romantic poetry. And I saw books about burglary, burglary and fraud. I even had to tackle you to the ground one time so you wouldn't blow us all up. You can resist a good scheme. Kind of exciting, seeing a hex pop up and down the stairs looking for the right books. First password was password, and the second password was password, past password, and the third one was passwords, past the passwords, password. You wish, but no. It was one, two, three, four. Easy to crack, good for you. First room was an alchemy lab full of apparatuses that I'd never seen before. Most of the liquids had gone dry, but Hex insisted on taking whatever was left along with this one anyways. Wouldn't let me taste any though. But the nerd was more interested in the study hidden behind the door. He was really determined to crack all of that old wizard's mysteries. We held where we could, but listen, I only have like three brain cells. The soundscape of the tower was kind of depressing. Silence broken only by the dripping of water. 
and the creaking of old wood. His voice sweetened with a song. It was very easy to get into the flow with that bomb music for you. Thank you. Excellent find to keep the glass case, but at least you found a blueprint showing how it was built. Maybe you can find out how to open it using that. That'd be nice. He's pretty beaten up about everything, though. Yeah. Couldn't find what he was looking for. Not even in the third room. No. That one was a gem. Didn't always work worked out. He was a distraction from the hidden vault. A hidden vault? Anything good in there? Oh yeah. More than our arms could carry. Much of our artifacts. Most of them probably cursed. Which makes it even cooler. But you, keep, you don't even know what the funniest part yet. Lie to me. The whole time, the wizard had a spare key to the tower under the doormat. He always have it of all time. You didn't even think about checking him alert. I did. But I wanted them to find it for themselves. But when they left it for the tower, I was at the beach with Jade. She had arrived a while ago to pick us up, and I was teaching Onyx new tricks. She helped us heave all the loot onto her boat. We couldn't take everything with us, so we decided to head back there again another day. There's one thing that doesn't make sense in all this equation, though. That would be... Inigo, Boy, and Hex traveled alone. Well, except for me, they're still away. Yet, I found a fresh set of footprints by the coast before Jade ever arrived. Maybe there was a fifth person on the island. Maybe someone was there just shortly before us. We didn't even notice. Just like we didn't notice Melina. I'm sorry for staying hidden for so long. Don't apologize. I think you just proved your skills as a detective. We've got a lot to learn from you. What a story. Can't wait to share it with Archie. I'll be on my way now. Let me check up on Hex and make sure you didn't accidentally take a book from Nicole. You coming with, Nico? Sure thing. So long, Inkeep. Goodbye, Inkeepa. Don't kiss miss me too much. I'll try not to. Alright. You've explored an abandoned wizard to look for a lost or maybe forbidden spells. According to his contents, he was rather fixated on inspecting every piece of loot as he was looking for something particular. A spell to protect his sister, maybe? Apparently, his Hagum also doubles as a magical teleportation device and it can open the ethereal weave. Luckily, he's safe as long as he plays the right notes. Slowly but steadily, he is getting over his fright stage fright. Learning how to use his skills, I hope Grace and I get tickets to his concert next concert. Alright. Now it's just you and me, Keeper. Indeed. I'm glad you're back. You're making it sound like I was lost or kidnapped. I was just investigating. Without telling anyone? I don't tell need to tell anyone where I'm going. People care about you, Melly. They get worried if they don't know where you are. Oh. I'm not used to that. But I care about people too. Like, you. That's good to hear. <laughs> Melly. Hi, Aura. Hi, Dave. Oh. That name is so outdated. I'm. You're back. I am. Did you miss me? Did I? I was just... very worried. What? Melly Melly. What about it? you never done that before. I... I... I'm sure I have. You even said you'd never call me Melly. I'm... just glad you're back. Welcome back to my tavern, Dave. That's a cute one. Yeah, I got it. On my latest quest. Dave, you made a good choice. I also went on a quest. Well, at first I wanted to find the moon swamps. You know, the mysterious magical swamp that is said to be magically hidden and only appears in foggy but starry nights. I'd heard there are somewhere in the moon swamp near the portal to the pilot chasm. And did you find anything? No, I did find some weird waymakers made of bones. That seemed to lead somewhere. They had do not touch written on them, and the paint even seemed fresh. 
so it looked like the perfect blue. But then, suddenly, there were just gallons of water everywhere. Luckily I got away quick, and since I was already there... I suppose so as best detective, my duty to discover the flood's origins. Well, at first I was more of a stowaway than a detective, and I also couldn't figure out what the... Those storm off like that ever again, didn't you understand? I was so worried and no one knew anything about your whereabouts. Now, now. I... I... I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I should have left you like that. It's just... I... I haven't cared about anyone in so long. And with you and Fable have suddenly gone, I didn't know what to do. I... I thought you didn't care. After you went away, even though I asked you to be more careful, I thought you maybe... You didn't want to be my trusty assistant after all. So I just... I went to investigate alone. I'm sorry for leaving. It's alright. You're used to people leaving and... Not coming back. I do care, Millie. I'm just kind of new to this whole honesty thing. Kind of new to this whole empathy thing. Yeah, I figured. If you'd like, I could fix you a drink to help you find your words again. Don't know if I'm up for trading another secret in exchange. It's on me today. You've got enough to worry about. So let me see what I can do for you. Alright, some charisma today. Oh, cursed coffee. If you peer inside the steam chalice, looking at your own distorted reflection, you'll find the darkest willing depths. The blankness will be all-consuming and gloom so bitter you might think you see the souls of the dance within the inside, but really, you're just looking at a strong cup of coffee. That's it. Oh. Splash of this. And three dashes of this. A thousand wings ready to be served. Oh, what a lovely drink. Enjoy your magical liquid eloquence. It doesn't taste half bad. This might actually help. So, your quest. Jade said you were stranded in Morlia. Yep. I followed three very suspicious looking fellows and somehow ended up on that island. Why do I always run into wizards and magic when I'm out on adventures? And traps. Magical traps everywhere. Sounds very dangerous. Take those mad detectives always seeking thrills. I'll make sure to be careful, I promise. It's not about that. I know you know how to take care of yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't have solved the T-Rex case. Eh. Eh. You don't keep putting your own life at risk in exchange for a quick adventure. Luckily. Nothing major happened this time. This all could have ended very differently. I... I know. All I'm saying is... Don't disappear again. Please. You're not alone anymore. You don't have to do everything but all by yourself. Like you're one to talk. I think you got a for... I think you got a point, Mel. To be fair, Dave's got a point. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to him as well, Melly. You're both guilty, but you two have also made a lot of progress already. I'm glad both of you made it back safely. Heard anything from Fable yet? No, not yet. What about Carolyn? She came back after the flood. Apparently she's investigating some undead sightings in the Pale Woods. Do you know when she'll be back? No. The two of you can wait here for her if you'd like. Yes, please. Uh, I don't want to stay until Carolyn gets back. Alright, I'll keep you company. How about I spice up your weight with another drink? I'll pass. Oh, but I'd like one, please. 
Of course. Do you want anything specific? Hmm, that whole adventure was pretty exhausting. Maybe something to combat my mental tiredness? Nothing easier than that. What trick is that? Oh, brain power. Of course. Let's see what peak sunrise. A bit of this. Two bits of this. Well, one bit of that. And then three bits of this. Right up. Let's see if this will wake you up again. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is delicious. I can feel my synapses connecting. You know, now that I've not had some time to think about it, I think I figured out why Hex was so bummed about the loot. Care to share your insight with us? But of course. He has a younger sister, right? It always struck me as odd. She looks so much older than him. So what if he, she just ages faster than he does? And he expected to find some very special loot in that wizard tower. But he didn't find it. So what if he was looking for something to extend her life? Like a scroll of immortality. What a foolish idea. Hey. Not you, Hex. Even if it's tempting, those are powers that no one should interfere with. I agree. What if she turns into a zombie? I've had enough of them. Definitely. We should tell them when we see him again. Maybe we should tell Carolyn when she returns. She seems to be experienced in dealing with the undead. Do you think it'll be a long time before she gets back? I don't know. It could be very soon, but it could also take a few more, more days. You've had a long day. Aren't you tired, Millie? No. I, I, I'm not tired. At all. Let's wait a little bit longer. Maybe she'll show up and fable with her. Sounds good. Did she fall asleep? Yeah. Maybe I should bring her home and wrap this up for tonight. That's a good idea. You should get some rest as well. I'll let you know if I hear anything about Carolyn or Fable. Alright. There's not much for me to do otherwise. Except care for Melly. She needs you. Yeah. I think you might be right. Good night, Dave. You know. Ah, uh, forget about it. See ya. Here you go, Landu. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And... <sighs> Candles blown out. Alrighty, let's save this. And that will be the end of tonight. I would like to say thank you to everybody who came by tonight from Force Steel, Nampy, Watermelon, Watermelon, and M made this as well. And for anybody else who stopped by, if you see this on YouTube, thank you for watching. And if you want to see me live, feel free to come to Twitch. But for now, I'm not going to sleep, this is just the end of the stream. That's like a good stopping point, I think. But for now, you'll see me around at some point in time. Daisy Double T out and about. And deuces. Have a good time.